All right, we are going to change around the schedule a little bit. I'm told that the judge has a flight he has to get on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and bring him up next. Okay, hold on. Okay, we do have two people that are very, very important that I want that I want you to hear that are actually going to come after the judge. Okay, Representative Jared Martin and Senator Tim Grendel. Um, they are the sponsors of the sovereignty resolutions currently currently before the House and Senate. It is very important that they hear your message, so I please ask that you stick around after the judge. All right. So who's ready for the judge anyway? He is a graduate of the Notre Dame Law School. He is the youngest life-tenured Superior Court judge in the history of the state of New Jersey. He taught constitutional law and jurisprudence as an adjunct professor of law at the Seton Hall Law School. But I think most of you know him from his work on Fox News as senior judicial analyst. He is a legal scholar and an author in his own right. He has written books including Constitutional Chaos, What Happens When the Government Breaks Its Own Laws, and most recently, Dred Scott's Revenge, A Legal History of Race and Freedom in America. It is an honor and a distinct privilege, especially for a group that didn't exist two months ago, okay, to be able to get someone like Judge Andrew Napolitano to speak. down a couple of fervent beliefs that animate everything I do and everything I say. I believe that God created heaven and earth and every single individual on the planet. I believe that the God who gave us life gave us liberty and that freedom is our birthright. I believe that the states created the federal government and not the other way around. And that the power that the states gave to the federal government, they can take back. We were colonists, and the king and the parliament needed money from us, and they always seemed to need money. They devised ingenious ways to tax us. One of them was called the Stamp Act. The parliament decreed that every piece of paper that the colonists had in their homes, every book, every document, every deed, every lease, every pamphlet, every poster to be nailed to a tree, had to have the king's stamp on it. You had to go to a Brit. You didn't go to the post office as bad. You had to go to a British government office and buy a stamp with the king's picture. Question: How did the king know that his picture was on every piece of paper in your house? The Parliament enacted a hateful piece of legislation called the Writs of Assistance Act which let the king's soldiers write their own search warrants and bang down any door they chose to look for the stamps or anything else that they were looking for. It was the last straw. We fought a revolution. We won the revolution. We wrote a constitution. The constitution doesn't grant power. It keeps the government off our backs. When 
they were debating the Constitution in the summer of 1787 in Philadelphia, there were two great arguments, one by the Jefferson and Madison crowd and one by the Adams and Hamilton crowd. Jefferson argued, though he wasn't physically there in Philly, Jefferson argued, as he did in the Declaration of Independence, that our rights are ours by virtue of our humanity, that as God is perfectly free and we are created in his image and likeness, we too are perfectly free.